Welcome to a very special edition of Indianomics. My guest is one of India's longest serving economic policy makers, second only to Dr. Manmohan Singh, actually. My guest is Dr. C. Rangarajan, former Reserve Bank of India Governor, 12th Finance Commission Chairman, former Chairman of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council. In fact, Dr. Rangarajan has made or influenced policy in various capacities all the way from 1982 to 2014. That is 32 long years. Now he has put down the takeaways from all these 32 years in his just published autobiography uh, titled Fox in the Road, My Days in RBI and Beyond. Dr. Agarajan, before I come to you, sir, uh, about uh, your book, let me just add for the benefit of my viewers, how seminal was your era in the Reserve Bank? 1992 to 1997 is perhaps the most important five years in RBI's 85-year-old history. Those were the years that transformed India from a command and license economy to a market-driven economy. They freed India from the Hindu rate of growth of 3.5% until then, you, mostly till the 70s, to a 5 to 6% growth in the 90s and then to the 7 to 8% growth in the 2000s. Dr. Agarajan, congratulations on writing this book and uh, for agreeing to speak to me today. Well, uh, let me begin, sir, with the book. My favorite chapters start from chapter 4. You're calling it the crisis years 1990-92, all the way to chapter 7, the external sector and making the rupee uh, uh, convertible on the current account. Uh, can you tell us what do you think were the biggest uh, achievements or, uh, you know, what stands out for you in that very crucial period? Well, there are many things uh, that happened uh, between 1992 and 97. Mm. Um, but even in the 80s, mm. um, a lot of effort was made in order to bring about changes in the approach to monetary policy and in the conduct of monetary policy and revitalizing the money market and so on. Uh, the attempt to reorient monetary policy started in the middle of 1980s, but it can bloom into its full phase uh, only between 1992 and 97. Uh, I would say that in some sense, uh, the uh, what happened between 1992-1997, even at the Reserve Bank, uh, falls into three distinct parts. One relates to the conduct of monetary policy, uh, the change in approach, uh, the uh, freedom given uh, for conducting monetary policy. Second is, or the changes that were made in the exchange rate management and the management of the external sector. And the third, of course, is to modify the banking system, reorient the banking system uh, and strengthen the banking system uh, by introducing the prudential norms. Therefore, in some sense, all the three areas uh, underwent significant changes during the period and uh, the reforms in the financial system, the reforms in the monetary system corresponded and tied in with what the changes were happening in the entire system under the new regime. You know, the uh, stuff of uh, uh, Reserve Bank of India governor memories is the fights they have with North Bloc. Did you have any? Well, in, in, in one sense, um, there are differences of opinion. It cannot always be said that whatever RBI said or whatever the government said went through automatically. It is not so. Obviously, there are two independent institutions with two different mandates, uh, even those subserving a much larger uh, common uh, purpose. Uh, but as I used to say to, uh, that we were, in a sense, passing through a crisis. 
and um, it was a very difficult period. If I may say so, uh, the conditions did not permit the luxury of the governor and the minister fighting with each other. Um, the, uh, therefore, the, there are two things. Obviously, there can be differences. And how those differences are ironed out, how they are uh, reconciled, or how they are uh, managed. Therefore, problems can arise um, between the central bank and the government uh, because of strong differences on views or strong um, differences in the way in which the differences could be um, sorted out. I think both are important. But I will say that um, what is really required is to allow the central bank of the country the freedom to operate on certain matters given a mandate. Uh, the inflation targeting idea is a, is a, falls into that category. The mandate is given by the, the government that 4% should be the target, but you can go plus or minus 2%. Then once that um, mandate is given, the freedom to operate must be that of the Reserve Bank of India. Therefore, in some sense, the mandate is something on which the government will have a say. But once a mandate is given, then there should be no, no interference with the uh, freedom with which the, the central bank of the country operates. Uh, that you is... Uh, the way you have uh, taken this answer uh, wants me to drag you to your last chapter, actually, where you are speaking about ruminations. You know, over there you have uh, uh, spoken at length on uh, the new MPC. You have been an inflation warrior yourself and uh, you have spoken about the uh, current proclivity or, you know, the perennial tendency of people to say, no, no, the inflation is higher than the mandate because of supply side. And you've even quoted Friedman to say that uh, monetary, uh, that inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. Uh, at this juncture, the Reserve Bank and the MPC, the newly created, the young body, the MPC, start standing at a very crucial juncture where it is tempting to believe that, you know, other countries' inflation is so much higher than their own targets. Therefore, we should not go hammer and tongs at raising rates to bring our inflation to 4%. Uh, what, what would be your opinion, sir? You think they should be very uh, wedded to 4% and work assiduously towards it? Steve, first of all, the mandate clearly indicates what the uh, medium-term goal is. Uh, the medium-term goal is 4%. Freedom is given to be around that plus or minus 2%. The first thing that we should really do is that we should get back into that comfort zone. And uh, the, the, that is clearly uh, warranted. Uh, we, when we are operating beyond the comfort zone, my interpretation of inflation targeting idea is that first action must be taken to get back to the comfort zone. Then how much time you take once you are in the comfort zone to get back to 4% is, um, is a matter of judgment, uh, is a matter of looking at a variety of circumstances. But the attempt to get back into the comfort zone, in my opinion, uh, should not be uh, a matter of uh, a discussion or a matter of vacillation. Now, that is uh, the, the approach that I will take. don't think the MPC is uh, disputing that point at all. They're okay with 6%. I'm not very sure whether they're, uh, you know, getting to 4% in a hurry. We don't know. The meetings are still underway. Uh, so I have to take a quick break. But more on this issue and on whether, you know, at this juncture, the interest rate also has to be used to be a bastion for the rupee. That question also, since your ruminations chapter raises that issue. I'm coming back with that question after this break. <laughs>